Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video. This time we're going to look at another pair of headphones. This is another cheapie. Well, in terms of cost. We'll see in terms of performance. Anywho, uh, this is a second suck of the sav by a company called Falbear. F-A-L-E-B-A-R-E. -E. It is not spelled completely at all like you would expect it to be. Anywho, I think that's the company's name. It's really getting confusing trying to keep track of multiple companies. Anywho, uh, they sent this guy in. Uh, this retails for 30 bucks and it's currently on sale for 20 bucks with a uh, 10% off coupon. So, and uh, these are Bluetooth headphones. It says Super Bass <laughs> Wireless 6S. Uh, I guess that's the model number. It's 6S. Very iPhone-y kind of looking uh, S there. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, specifications. Uh, it has wired mode, wireless, Bluetooth, obviously, sensitivity, 113 decibels, 40 millimeter speaker, uh, driver diameter. Uh, interesting to give a frequency range. Okay. Uh, 32 ohm impedance. Uh, max support 32 gigs. Does this have an SD card slot? Okay, that's kind of interesting. We'll take a look at that. Battery capacity is 500 milliamp hours, and thank God it uses Type C. And, uh, yeah, on the other side, we just have a sort of quick start legend with it says power on off. We got a volume slash track skip buttons. Uh, answer, you can answer, play, pause, answer, all that kind of stuff. And then mode. It says you can switch between wireless, EQ presets, FM. This has an FM radio built. That's interesting. So this is like an all-in-one. So these aren't just a regular pair of Bluetooth headphones. That's kind of cool. Uh, and trans flash, which is micro SD, obviously. And the box, I mean, it looks decent enough. It comes in uh, this black and gold, and then it comes in a black and red, a black and blue, and then a white and gold, and a white and a rose gold. So there's like five different types you got. And scan with the transparency app. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to get this guy open, and we'll take a look. Oop. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, foldable EQ presets, 5 button control, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If these don't sound horrible, I'm not expecting for like a $20 pair of headphones. My expectations are way lower than if it costs like $50, if I'm being honest. So, if these if it's something that I would give to like a 10 year old then i would say yeah 20 bucks for a pair of headphones is money well spent as long as it's like to the level that i would expect to be able to give it to like a kid and hopefully survive like a couple weeks if that we'll see uh, uh languages uh we have the manual here and uh correct disposal of <laughs> it I just, the first page I open, and they're already talking about throwing out the product. Uh, okay. I mean, the paper is really nice on the manual. Uh, we got the FCC statement. Um, really nice infographics, I will say. Like, the color coding, everything is on point. Looks like they at least put good effort into the manual. And it actually smells really good. It has that, uh, oh wow, it's like three pages. English and then the rest are all different languages uh, I was saying it smells really good it has that like fresh paper kind of smell which I kind of like like if you buy a new book yeah it's kind of nice anywho <laughs> uh, yeah we have some more specifications there I believe that's just kind of what was written on the box anyway and etc etc uh, we'll figure it out wow yeah one thing I, I did note when I first got this, uh, the box is way smaller than I would have thought. So, yeah, the headphones fold down pretty darn small. We have our bag of cables, which... The USB cable is pretty par for the course. It is not amazing. It's pretty cheap uh, construction, like, feeling-wise. I'm sure it'll work just fine, though. And it is about, like, two feet-ish. Maybe a little more. So, eh, it'll get the job done. Good enough. So the other cable is this guy, which is the auxiliary cord. 
And this actually feels better. Like, well, I mean, sort of. It's uh, kind of hard to tell. I don't think it's gold plated. I think it's just like probably nickel plated or something like that. But um, yeah, I've seen way cheaper than this. Like it's not super thin. There is plastic on the body. It's not metal or anything. There's some over molding on that. Yeah, I mean, that'll work. And the length is decently long. It's like probably three and a half, four feet long. So yeah, that is actually pretty decent for an aux cable. Headphones. There's no carrying case. I mean, it's it's a $20 pair of headphones. It's kind of asking a bit much. Uh, you're lucky enough that you got cables with it, I guess. But uh, it does look very well bubble wrapped. So there's that. We have the headphones themselves, and uh, they snap in. There's like a detent. Okay, um, first, first thoughts. Uh, First thoughts, they feel like a $20 pair of headphones. Take that however you want. Um, plastic is a little creaky. I mean, articulation on the ear cups, uh, there must be like some kind of ball socket. It's pretty minimal. You basically got like a couple degrees of freedom left, right, and then somehow seemingly less up and down so comfort wise it might be an issue we'll see the foam padding is there it's not the best i felt we'll see in a second the plastic itself is like glossy it's gonna get fingerprints it already has my fingerprints all over it now it has uh not foam on the top it's rubber there's a little bit of padding but yeah i'm i'm gonna already guess that um, the top isn't going to be so comfortable because this foam stuff is kind of hard and after a while it transfers. I mean, it's not heavy, so it has that going for it, but it will eventually start. You'll feel a little bit sore and like the weight of the headphones on the top of your head. So, I mean, I'll, I'll obviously put this all to the test, but interesting. Uh, there's actually, they, they tell you the, the setting goes from one to seven. Hmm. And it's uh, all gold, obviously. And on the other side, the same thing. Yeah, there you go. So I guess if you wanted to know the exact setting that you set it to, fair enough. Uh, no metal, though. So, I mean, time will tell if this breaks. You can see the wire going between the two halves snakes its way under the band there. And, uh, yeah, let's see. The ear pads... Yeah, probably technically replaceable because uh, it looks like, yeah, there's just a, a plastic ring that's like donut shaped that these ear pads fit around and then that's probably clipped into place. There's probably clips all around here. Um, so if you wanted to replace the ear pads with something more comfortable, it's at least possible to. So there's that. Uh, I'm not too big of a fan of the glossiness. I mean, black and gold is fine. Uh, probably not my first color choice, but... Uh, it looks okay, but uh, just so many fingerprints already, and I, I just touched this for not that much time. This whole thing is a big button. That's interesting. And we have four smaller buttons around it. Uh, they are separate. I thought they were like this was one disc that you like clicked on the different parts, but no, they're actually separate buttons. Uh, so we have the left and the right here. And uh, one side says wireless unnecessarily, but... Okay, we have the aux jack in on the bottom there. Where the heck is your USB? Ah, interesting, huh? So, <laughs> I guess the control board is just in this little puck here. So it's probably just a round circular board and then just the drivers in here and maybe the battery, or maybe the battery's up here. I don't know, I kinda wanna open this, but uh, we'll test this first. There's the USB-C port uh, on the side there. That's an interesting one. I usually expect to see it like on the bottom, on the opposite side from the uh, the headphone jack. There's the micro SD card slot integrated very interestingly into the side there. And uh, there's some holes maybe for power indication or for mic. If this has, this should have wireless mic. I'm pretty sure it does. That'd be weird if it didn't. 
Uh, the pocket inside for the for your ear where it goes isn't very deep, and it's just mesh, and then it's hard plastic with the uh, the grill with all the holes for the speaker. So uh, long term, that's probably not going to be super comfortable. Um, I'm kind of expecting this not to be very comfortable. But like I said, twenty bucks for kids headphones. Kids probably have a higher tolerance to crap than adults do. Uh, but let's just put it on. Ooh, forgot to adjust the sides. It's like massive. Good thing it'll fit massive heads. If you have a massive head, it will fit you. Uh, on its largest setting, my head was floating in it. Okay. Okay, interestingly enough, uh, it, there is some passive noise can uh, isolation, so... It's a little harder to hear my fridge running behind me when I have them on versus when I take them off. Uh, comfort wise, the ear pads aren't quite big enough. Maybe my ears are big, I don't know. But uh, my ear lobes kind of being pressed by the uh, ear pad. These are supposed to be over ear headphones, but they're acting almost like on ear head headphones for my, uh, for my specific ears. Uh, comfort wise, yeah, the top band is already not super comfortable. Uh, the articulation, mm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna already, um, gonna take a stab at this. I'm probably gonna be able to wear these for about half an hour to maybe an hour max before my ears get so sore that I have to take them off and just they're uncomfortable. Uh, but like I said, who knows, maybe kids will uh, have a better time with these. Uh, let me turn them on and see sort of what the noise floor is like. So I'm pressing the power button on the side. See if it's a British accent this time that says power on and pairing. And there is a, there was a sort of high frequency it wasn't super loud, but you could definitely hear on the Oddly enough, only on the one side, a sort of high frequency, low amplitude sort of scree sound for like five seconds and then it shut off. Which, uh, oh, oh yeah, that is the power indicator. It's flashing red and blue. Uh, so maybe when it's trying to connect or when it's, uh, tr you know, receive, you know, scanning or something over Bluetooth, maybe it makes that sound. But uh, let me actually connect this to my phone and uh, play some music through it and let you guys know uh, if there's any like weird noise floor kind of stuff going on or like digital uh, sort of interference noises that some cheaper headphones make. Okay, so I just listened to a handful of songs with this across different genres and whatnot. So uh, let's put it this way. I'm actually kind of impressed for like a $20 pair of headphones. These don't sound horrible. Like I've listened to way worse for about the same price. <laughs> uh, so the noise floor problem, that, that weird sound, apparently that was just when it was trying to pair. Uh, once it's paired, it's like dead silent. The noise floor is actually decent. Like you can definitely hear it. It's there, but it's way lower than uh, I expected, honestly, for the price. So that's good. Uh, this is basically bass and mids, uh, not too much of the high end, like I have some high frequency noises, uh, but it's, it's predominantly bass and mids and maybe upper mids. Uh, so the bass is like decently punchy, but it does get overwhelming if there's a lot going on in the music. This works really well for like, ironically enough, like. Uh, things that are like acoustic where like you don't have multi layers of like all different instruments playing at the same time. This works well for like things like acoustic, uh, classical. I'm sure this would be decent with, uh, maybe the highs are struggling because the lows and, uh, the mids are kind of very pronounced. Uh, but yeah, I would say overall, I would 100% get these for like a kid. <laughs> uh, these are better probably than they would i mean they wouldn't complain about them they work just fine uh yeah I, i'll put a little bit more time i'll watch like youtube videos with these but i'm sure if this can do music like okay i'm sure it'll do videos just fine too uh but yeah uh the bass is a little bit muddy a little bit uh 
not very controlled and reined in. Uh, but it is probably fine for listening to like the majority of things if you if you're not really seriously, you know, trying to listen to music. Uh, good enough for kids. Uh, I actually do want to test the other functions. I'm interested in the radio, how well that works, because I'm in my basement and like I have a radio right next to me that like barely works because the reception's crap here. So I kind of want to see if the radio works at all. Also, like what what's with the antenna? Do you need to plug in a cord? Does it have an internal FM antenna? I want to see how that works as well as an SD card. I have to grab an SD card and find one and see if uh, how that playback works for that. Uh, because that this would actually be interesting, uh, even though this isn't very comfortable and I wouldn't use this for serious music listening. Uh, if I put an SD card in here and that works fine, I might actually consider using this for exercise because I, I, I sweat like a horse and uh, I don't want to wear a nice pair of headphones. But if these get waterlogged, it's 20 bucks. I don't care. <laughs> so, yeah, these might make a good disposable like exercise pair of headphones for me personally. Uh, or if you just want to, you know, throw them at your kid and, uh, yeah, a kid, like, honestly, like 10 year old Sean would have been perfectly happy with these. He would have rocked out with these listening to radio and whatnot. Uh, when I was a kid, Bluetooth wasn't really, a, yeah, it wasn't a thing. It absolutely wasn't until I got a little bit older, but, uh, yeah, I would have absolutely used these also kind of want to see. So the Bluetooth I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with. For the most part, I want to see though if I use the auxiliary cord and wire it to something. Is the lack of higher frequencies is that a Bluetooth problem, like a limitation, or is it a limitation of the acoustic design? Uh, that should be pretty interesting. So give me one second, I'll test out more things and come back to you guys. Okay, so interesting thing. Uh, I just tried the FM radio. I, I'm not really blaming this. Uh, you don't need to plug in the cord. In fact, if you plug in this cord, all the electronics shut off and it just acts like a regular wired pair of headphones, which is fair enough. Okay. Uh, so the antenna must be built in and I'm in my basement, so I get crap reception. So I actually have to go upstairs to test that. But uh, it basically acts as one of those like auto scan radios. You can't tune up and down. You can only go to the next station. Uh, so you have to, to change modes, you have to press and hold the M button. Uh, and it says, it sounds like it's saying FM Tinder, <laughs> which is weird, but I'm guessing it's just the accent. It's, it, that's the FM radio mode. Anywho, uh, and then it says you have to press the play pause button to like scan to the next station. And I don't know if it like saves what station you are because I can't get any stations down here. It's just all static every time I scan it. So I'm going to have to go upstairs for that. So that's fair enough. Also, I like this last question. Uh, what if headphones are defective or just doesn't meet your expectations? We admit that the headphones might be defective on rare occasions. At least they're honest about it. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Good on them. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to run and test other functionality. I actually have to take these upstairs. So this is probably going to be a thing where I test this like overnight and I get back to you guys tomorrow. Okay, so I listened to these over aux using actually a Sansa Clip Plus. And this is known for having like a pretty good DAC in it. And it's like, it sounds very good for, you know, the size and whatnot. So anyway, I'm listening through auxiliary. And no, it's not just the Bluetooth portion that's letting it down. The acoustics themselves are just naturally really only capable of reproducing mids and lows uh highs yeah i mean kind of sort of there but uh this has stinky bass <laughs> it is kind of fun though with certain tracks uh like it's not tight it's pretty loose uh so it's not very well defined it tends to muddle between the mids and the lows and so the highs really don't get that much representation. They're there, but like they're sort of detracted by like the lower frequencies. But if you get certain tracks that have like a really good bass line, these are actually kind of fun. So despite their cheapness, yeah, I'm sort of actually digging these. <laughs> I'm going to listen some more though, and I'm going to take out the SD card from here. I think I have a 32 gig SD card. I have no idea what the max SD card this can take, but if it can take a 32 gig SD card with several thousand tracks, uh, that would be that would be really cool, actually. So let me test that out. Okay, so I took the SD card out of here. It was actually a 64 gig card, so 
This Reddit, no problems. Absolutely. And it's chock full of tracks. There's probably like 50 some gigs on the card itself. It's almost full and probably something like 10,000 tracks. So that Reddit, no problems. It starts up, it maybe takes like a couple seconds for it to, I guess, read the card. One good thing about this is if you're listening to the card, as long as you don't remove the card, it remembers where you left off. Because I have so many tracks on here, it, it only plays sequentially, by the way. So you it starts with the first track that you have within the file listing, and it just goes through. I believe I have a bunch of different folders in here, and it, it seems to just treat them as if they're all in the same one big folder, and it just sequentially plays them. There's no way I could figure out to, um, to like put it into shuffle mode, that would be perfect. But at the very least, if you're listening to things sequentially, like even if you're listening to like audiobooks or on this, something like that, uh, it does remember where in the track you are, as well as uh, what track number you left off on if you uh, shut it down. So that's actually pretty good. I also found out if you, you have to press and hold the mode button to change modes, but if you just press it quickly, it shuffles through EQ modes. There's about like four of them, I think, four or five. And uh, don't bother using them. They're all just variations on like even more bass and less mids and highs or just like a high pass filter that like just decimates all the bass and whatnot. So like they're, yeah, not really useful. It sounds honestly best if you just don't use any of the EQ settings. And ironically enough, I don't know if I'm just getting used to this more, but I swear listening to the SD card sounded better than Bluetooth and auxiliary somehow. I have no idea how that, the the high higher frequencies actually sounded a little clearer off the SD card. I don't know if that's just my ears playing tricks on me, but it actually sounded pretty damn good. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the SD card also has like a very low noise, noise floor, so I'm very happy with that. There's no weird interference or high frequency hiss sounds, nothing like that. It's like dead silent when it's supposed to be silent. Uh, so overall, like their circuitry, I think is like pretty spot on. It like does a decent job for, you know, especially considering the price on these. Uh, one thing that does stink though is uh, no matter what mode you're in, if you press and hold the, uh, the you know, plus minus buttons, it'll adjust the volume, but you can't track, uh, you can track skip, but you can't fast forward through tracks. Uh, because on the SD card, I would like to be able to track uh, fast forward and rewind, especially if I were to use this for like audiobooks, you would kind of need that. You can't do that, unfortunately. Uh, you can just skip to the next track or the previous track, because as soon as you press and hold like you would expect to do to fast forward and rewind, it would just change the volume. Also, I noticed maybe a bug. If you turn it off, so I was lis listening to the SD card. I turned it off, I turned it on again, and then it started playing where it left off, fair enough. But the volume was much louder than I left it. So it, it seems to default to like 50% volume all the time, which is like just a little bit too loud. So first thing I have to do as soon as I turn this on is hurry up and hold the minus key to like lower the volume. Otherwise, you know, it's going to blow my eardrums out. So maybe kids won't exactly enjoy that. Uh, but so far, that only, I think, is a problem with um, the SD card on Bluetooth, I didn't notice that so I don't know maybe it's a thing specific to the SD card I, I don't know uh, and it's happened to me twice already so I'm, I'm definitely sure it's it's reproducible it just will always start at 50% volume as soon as you turn this on so just be mindful of that and uh, decrease the volume either pause real quick and then decrease the volume and then you can play and continue playing off on the SD card yeah I'm actually really happy ironically enough these are a better pair of you know, standalone play music off any micro SD card headphones than Bluetooth headphones. I'm probably not going to use these for Bluetooth. I'm probably just going to use these as like sports headphones with an SD card loaded up with songs. And that's all I really need it for. I have no idea how long the battery will last. Uh, I haven't actually charged these. I've put on probably about an hour so far uh, between testing these uh, between testing these with the Bluetooth, the SD card, and trying the radio. By the way, the radio, I couldn't get to work. Uh, it's just static. No matter, I, I keep scanning. I'm, I'm in the, the top floor of my house. I definitely get reception here. I have a radio, like, right over there. <laughs> so, I don't know. The radio, I couldn't get to work on these. So, whatever. I, I actually would probably never use these for radio anyway. But that SD card 
that's odd that that's the standout feature on these. Uh, be even better than the Bluetooth. And the Bluetooth seemed to work, you know, just fine. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, now I'm kind of revising my thought on these. Definitely get these for kids. But also, if you just want like a throwaway pair of headphones that like you need to use, but if you destroy them or you lose them, you're not going to be very sad. Absolutely get these for 20 bucks. It's a no brainer. Like these are way better than 20 bucks. I, I probably wouldn't pay more than about 30 bucks for these. So I think their original price point of 30 bucks is probably spot on. Yeah. In terms of capability though, like these are, these are a good deal for 20 bucks. Absolutely. I'm definitely going to use these with an SD card. Just going to load up a bunch of music in there. I just wish I have to go through the manual. If there were a way I could like press and hold some button combination to put this into shuffle mode, I would love that. I would just stick, you know, 64 gig card it takes. So I don't see why it wouldn't take like 128 or even larger. Just stick all my music on there and just shuffle through all of them. That would be fantastic. Uh, especially at the sound quality that this has for the SD card, which uh, honestly, I'm, I'm still pretty surprised at. I was going to use them with like, you know, a clip or something, a small MP3 player that I can just like duct tape or rubber band onto the side here. But yeah, no, no need to just stick an SD card in there and you're good to go. Anywho, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, huge thanks to the manufacturer for sending this guy in. I wasn't expecting to like these as much as I did. And ironically enough, I like these better than the other pair of headphones that they sent me that had an active noise canceling. These don't have active noise canceling, but these are way cheaper too. So like, I'm actually honestly kind of blown away by these. I didn't expect to think that uh, this would be the outcome, but you know, that's why I do these reviews. Anyway, Hopefully you guys enjoyed these videos and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.